Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning, good evening, everybody. Hope welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a really good uh, week of trading. Uh, Monday, I think a lot of schools are off. The market is open. It is uh, Columbus Day. Okay, so the market is open for in case uh, some of you guys have wondered. So let's talk about the tape. So. Last week was very, very, uh, I would say aggressive, right? Uh, after the worst month of September uh, for the S&P since uh, the March uh, pandemic lows, right? Uh, we had a very horrific nonstop selling uh, for the investor crowd uh, month of September, which is awful. And, you know, what was going you know, to happen? First week of, of October and the first two weeks, uh, and you guys saw it, it was cartoonish like uh, the, the, the Dow put up 1500 points, uh, big, big move. The NASDAQ 100 and the QQQs, uh, they had a really big move up from the lows and got stuffed right at the 20 day moving average. So we, if you watch Wednesday's video, uh, we talk about the importance of that 284, 285 level for the bulls to reclaim. And unfortunately they didn't. And all roads led to uh, the jobs number, okay? If you watched uh, the report, uh, the video from Thursday night, uh, we were going to basically you know, use our day based off the data. And there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of things always in the market that could throw curveballs. But one of the major things that the market can do uh, is throw a monkey wrench that doesn't make any sense. A lot of people go into trading and going to investing with that sense of the market needs to make sense. The market doesn't need to make sense. And here's a perfect example, right? Uh, sometimes bad news is bad. Sometimes bad news is good. Sometimes good news is bad. Sometimes good news is bad. And Friday going into the jobs number, here is a perfect scenario that rationally, right? Rationally, good news is supposed to be good, right? Not until uh, you talk about when it's in regard to the Fed. And we got our job reading at 8.30 Eastern time and it was unexpectedly good. Jobs uh, claims, I think they fell about three and a half percent. And that on the surface, that's a good thing, right? That means, hey, there's more people, well, less people filing for unemployment. You know, there's, the workforce is strong, the economy is strong. Well, not so fast when it comes to the Fed. And, you know, the fact that there was a surprise um, weakness, right? Weakness in, in the jobs market. Uh, that they fell, now it changes kind of the narrative. Well, now the Fed doesn't uh, need to need to uh, continue to increase uh, Fed hikes. And that's a problem. The mo market read actually good news from Main Street as bad news. And, you know, we kind of all saw what happened, right? We all kind of saw what happened uh, right from the word go. And when you look at the scoreboard and you turn around and you go, well, for the week, uh, the S&P rose one and a half percent. The Dow rose two percent. Pretty good numbers, right? And the Nasdaq was up seven tenths of a percent. That's all fine and dandy, but the problem is we were up like five percent within the first, you know, in the first twenty-four hours. So it's like, you know, it's like a it's like a gambler losing a hundred thousand dollars, making back two thousand dollars, and just orders a bottle of Cristal to celebrate. Not a lot of things to be. Uh, excited about, but unfortunately, that's what the market is. That's what a bear cycle is. That's the predominant action which is going to take place uh, in below the 50-day moving average. And we talk about that. The the crazy part about this market, and I and I tweeted this out on my regular feed. Unlike 9/11, uh, where there was so much uncertainty, terrorist attack every possible day, this new rumors, anthrax, this, that, the other, the other. Uh, and the, the bear market from 2007 to the uh, generational bottom of 2009, unlike those two markets that had crazy volatility the majority of the time, and it was really sell, 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 sell for like 15 days in a row. And next thing you know, we have one day, the market's green, and then you got another 15 days of selling. This has been a, a, an incredibly orderly market, even, even when you are below the 50-day moving average. And we lost it on the CPI, and we'll get to that in a second, right? Once we lost it on the CPI, uh, we still had days that the bulls could actually make some money to the long side. Again, case in point, Monday, 
uh, and Tuesday, but the predominant action has been very, very orderly, even with the most aggressive sell-offs like the 1200 point reversal we saw in the CPA, CPI number on September the 13th, and even yesterday's uh, really, really big move down uh, on all major indexes, it, it felt very, very orderly. It wasn't like, you know, you saw Tesla trading in a $30 range. You know, it was orderly. It was down, 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 up a little bit, down, 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 up a little bit. And that was kind of pretty much the whole day. And that's kind of the, the, the unique aspect of this sell cycle versus the one that I've seen in 2007 to 2009 and from 2001 uh, to 2003. So it's very, very, uh, very, very interesting how both bulls uh, and bears, if they are both uh, if they are both just poised enough, right? Just positioned enough to, to, to have enough patience to kind of wait for their day in the sun, they could actually do very well. Again, the problem with that is you can't trade every single day exactly the same way because the trend, right? The trend is down. And obviously if you're a sell biased trader where you trade both sides of the market like I do, that's fine. You, you wanna go with the trend. The trickiest day is the days that are up, right? Those are the days because you don't know how high or how hard the rally is going to be. And those are the days become the trickiest because those are the days because you're also trading lesser size because is a dead cat bounce and the most important part is you don't know when that day or that trend is going to stop so uh crazy crazy week um a lot of buying a lot of selling and the question is what happens next and you know before we happen what happens next let's talk about the levels right and again the, the most important part on every single video the common denominator is not how great a stock performed or how great a, uh, how, how horrible a stock performed it's all about levels and it's all about technical analysis if you go back to the thursday night video right right before friday session we talked about the importance of 275.42 right so if you are a novice right if you're a novice trader or if you are an experienced trader, the data on your chart doesn't change. And, that, and that's the most important part and that's the most consistent part of every video. We don't talk about how great something is. We talk about how phenomenal technical analysis is, both longs and shorts. And no matter who you are, unless again, unless you're trading the Bangladesh exchange, right? You have 275.42 as your, your, your level of interest, right? Your, your pivot, right? Your line in the sand. And if you are a trader and if you are an investor and you have no business and you have no wish or no want or no enthusiasm about looking at charts and you say, well, technical analysis is a waste of time. Well, that 275.42 level was your, your lifeline, right? You, you kind of knew what was going to happen there, what was going to what should have happened there. And if you didn't know, it just didn't care. Well, two, you know, six points later on the cues. Well, do you care now? And that's the most important part. Fundamental analysis is great if you're an investor for a long term, 5, 10, 12, 20 years. If you're a trader, you better know. You better know every single level, every single day, because if you're not, you are trading blind. And I've said this for numerous times, numerous, numerous, numerous times. If you're an invest, in, if you're a brand new trader, and I get it, you're growing up in the in the whole social media uh, generation, you gotta know what this one's doing and that one's doing. This is all you need to know. It's right in front of you. It's the same data, folks. I promise you, my data is no different than your data. That's no different from Joe Blow's data. It's all the same. It's all about technical analysis. You either fall in love with it or you get run over it. And unfortunately, a lot of investors, and especially in this type of sell bias environment, are facing with the latter on pretty much on a daily basis. The big thing going into this new week is gonna be the CPI, right? And that's the CPI is the thing that, remember, this candle here on the 13th, right uh, september 13th well the cpi this is the candle that started this this next level of death spiral right that we, we're currently in right now so it's going to be very very uh important to, to see what the cpi reading is uh for september okay that's obviously going to set the tone but now we concentrate more important than that now we concentrate on more important things that are in the next levels right what's done is done if you didn't you know again if you knew that 275 40 level was important and you didn't care about it well it's over right it's in the past we don't live there anymore now we're looking at channels to, to the recent lows the recent low here on september the 30th and september the and august the third remember it's, uh, it was a friday and a monday they were both 267. You see it? 267.10, 267.53. So this will be obviously a very, very important line in the sand. So no matter if it's a CPI, GPI, ABC, GPD, whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it, right? 
The point is, if it starts building below this uh, 267 level, then you have your measured potential for the next leg down to 262 uh, on the NASDAQ 100. If you look at the SPIs, you'll have a little bit of a different view, but it kind of is the same thing. Again, SPIs lost this whole channel here. The bottom of the SPIs is 357, or if you are looking uh, at the SPX, uh, the big, big turn here is going to be below 3584, which is the low from the September 30 area. Very, very important indeed. So let's talk about the individual stocks, right? A lot of names broke down on Friday, as you can imagine. Uh, we'll get to individual pivots in a second, but there's a lot of names that still have not, or at least have not taken out the previous channel. And those are the names all in NASDAQ 100. Like you really don't have to um, search high and low this weekend. You could run through 100 stocks in the NASDAQ 100 in about three, four minutes, very, very quickly. And you could clearly see, look at the bottom range here on Amazon, right? Look at NVIDIA. Even though NVIDIA got had a monster day down on Friday, and obviously the catalyst was uh, AMD, but it hasn't even hit the bottom of the channel yet. So AMD looks terrible, right? I mean, excuse me, uh, NVIDIA looks terrible. I mean, a AMD looks, looks like lower prices as well. But there's, the point is there's a lot of names still that have haven't hit last week's low that potentially if they take them out this week you can see you know you can see a much more uh, of an aggressive snowballs effect but again like I said on Thursday uh, on Wednesday's video it's not just technology it's everything else again we talked about uh, BJ wholesalers right remember BJ wholesalers from Wednesday's video it's taking down the 50-day moving average again nice orderly move again start, this thing starts taking out 70 this thing has room to 67 68 that 72 area was super super big even a name like and again I'll show you in a second from Friday, but even a name like Levi Strauss, right? When was the last time you, you thought about Levi jeans or Levi Strauss, whatever the case may be? But it's the same thing. You know, stocks are getting hit all across the board. You got the banks, you got consumer cyclicals we're talking about. You got jeans companies, you have software. Whatever your, your drug of choice is, nothing is being spared. Everything is being sold. So again, it's very, very important to understand the levels coming into this to this uh, to this week. And if once again, if you haven't you know respected those levels in the past, and it really showed you the ramifications. What happens if you don't respect the levels in the past? Well, what's the old adage? You're, you're doomed to repeat history if you don't acknowledge it's, it's well, history. So that's that. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Friday's session. Again, um, jobs number came 3.5%. Unexpe uh, unexpected unemployment fell to 3.5%. Again, that changed the whole the whole framework of hey, maybe it's possible that the Fed stops raising rates now. Not so much, uh, but again, very very aggressive session. Uh, you had pretty much again you you didn't need to be for the exception of Levi Strauss. I'll show you that in a second. It was pretty much the horsemen, the same stocks you know that we look at every single day, uh, whether they were um, whether they were natural con uh, continuation or they were macro channels. The point is everything, nothing got spared. Everything, as you can imagine, got hit. Tesla, again, we've been trading this thing over and over and over again every single day. Tesla 233, if it builds below can flush. That was the number from three days ago, right? Here's the number from three days ago. So it took out the 233. Again, big, big move down, went all the way down to 222. Now it's below this linear regression line. Now it has all space. And if you look at all the space and you start looking, for example, on the weekly chart on Tesla, well, here's your pot of gold, right? Here's your pot of gold for next week if we continue the weakness into this 207 level uh, that correlates to, let's see here, May 23rd low, right? So Tesla has a lot of room down, but a big, big move on Tesla on Friday. Uh, Meta broke down macro-wise. It's I think this is first leg, uh, first leg down going into next week. 134 if it builds below can flush. Here was Meta. It triggered towards the afternoon. Not a big move yet, but again, this is the first close below this 134 area. Went down to that 132. This thing starts losing 32 if the market continues to push down. Uh, 127 is your next potential uh, target. Uh, Roku got smashed. 57.65 if it builds below can flush. Here was Roku, right? Here was Roku. You kind of have the same thing over and over and over again. So it lost the 57.65, went all the way down, pretty much at the lows of last week's range, put in the low of uh, 54 and change. This thing starts losing that 54 area, 55, 54 area has room to 51 and change. So again, you can see uh, measured potential there. Uh, Google only went down a little bit, 98.80 for builds below can flush. 
Uh, but I like Google going into this week, just like everything else, right? Google first close below the 10 day moving average only went down like 60, 70 cents, but this thing starts losing 98. You have room all the way down to 94 next week. Again, not everything could be huge. Amazon got smashed. Uh, and again, we are approaching a macro number uh, this week, potentially on Amazon, 117.69 if it builds below, uh, can flush. Here is Amazon, right? So it took out the 1769 traded all the way down to 1388. You see this bottom channel here? This is gonna be the one that's gonna potentially really crack this thing and give it an expansion uh, aggressive day if it gets down there, assuming it gets down there. Who knows? Maybe we could be looking at a dead cat balance for Friday's for Monday session. But again, all signs point to uh, continuation this week. Uh, Docu, uh, 50, if it builds below, can flush. Here is Docu, right? Here is Docu. It took out this whole level here, right? This whole range here went all the way down to 47 and change. If it loses the Bollinger Band uh, next week, again, you get the picture, it has more room to downside as well. Uh, cues, again, here's the line of the sand. You know, we talked about this on Thursday's video. Nobody should be surprised that that was the level, you know, that was the levy where, where, the, where it broke, right? That was the big level there. So 275.40, two uh, broke when traded all the way down to the 269s. NVIDIA massacred 126.21 all the way down to the 122s. Levi, again, here's and here and here's guys. You remember where we saw about option flow, option flow, option flow? When you see option flow, a big aggressive buyer come in, and we've, we've been talking about this nonstop for years, but when you see option flow and a level gets lost, there's a high probability it's gonna follow through to that side. 1440 held twice, a buyer comes in for 10,000, right? Not 100, not 10,000 of the January 13 puts, swing potential, nice move on Levy, uh, really nice move on Levy when here's, you know, took out the whole, excuse me, took out this whole 1440 level, traded all the way down to the 1360s. Uh, this thing looks uh, lower as well. And I believe that is it, right? That's it. So that's it. So moral of the story is guys, look, uh, the market is super duper aggressive. Uh, I've been saying this for years, if you're an investor, you better have a plan. If you're a trader, you have both sides of the market to trade, that is your course of action. The only time you should be patient is waiting for your channel or waiting for your daily chart or however in, on, on this great, beautiful earth, uh, you decide to trade and put stakes in the freezer until that level gets taken out. You're an observer until you are ready to roll. Guys, have a great weekend. God bless. And I look forward to seeing you guys on Monday. Take